Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 244. And today is our lesson number 140. Let's take a look at it. Problem number 6 is what we are doing, what we are about to do. Number 6. It simply says, solve the following equations. So that's what we shall do. First one says, 5x minus 7 equals 28. Very simple, very straightforward. Let's add 7 to both sides. 7 cancel out, and 5x equals 35. Divide both sides by 5. 5 cancels out, and x equals 35 divided by 5, which is 7. That's your x. x equals 7. Let's verify it very quickly, shall we? Let's verify it. 5 times x, which is 7, 7 times 5 is 35, and 35 minus 7 is indeed 28. 35 minus 7 is indeed 28. It works. Number 2. It says 12 minus 5x equals x plus 30. So let's bring all the x's on one side and all the numerical values on the other side. And the tradition dictates, convention dictates, that we bring the unknown to the left hand side and all the known quantity to the right hand side. That is just a convention. If you do it the other way around, I assure you nobody's going to come and arrest you. You understand? So, how do I bring the 12 to the other side? By subtracting 12 from both sides. Subtract 12 from both sides. How do I bring this x to the other side? By subtracting x from both sides. See, this is a positive x. We're going to subtract it so it's going to cancel out and it's going to show up on the other side. So let's do it, shall we? A positive 12 and a negative 12 is going to cancel each other out. A negative 5x and a negative x is going to give us negative 6x equals a positive x and a negative x is going to cancel each other out. And positive 30 and a negative 12 is going to give us positive 18. Let's carry on. We have to get the x by itself, so divide both sides by negative 6. Divide both sides by negative 6, and negative 6 cancel out with this negative 6, and x equals 18 divided by negative 6, which is negative 3. Which is negative 3. Let's verify it, shall we? Let's verify it to make sure that we have the right answer. Ah, oh, this, this is a bloody mess. 12 minus 5x. 12 minus 5x, which we found is negative 3. A negative 3 times a negative 5 is a positive 15. So here we end up with 12 plus 15. 12 plus 15, 12 plus 12 is 24, so it's 27. Let's see what we find on this side. This side says x plus 30. x, which is negative 3. Oh, what do you know? Negative 3 plus 30, x plus 30. Negative 3 plus a 30 is same as the other side, 27. They match. It works. It is the right solution. Let's do the next one. C. How many do we have? Oh, we have quite a few. Let's do C. 5 times x plus 2 equals 1 minus 3x. Let's open the parenthesis. 5 times x is 5x. Five, 5 times 2 is 10 equals 1 minus 3x. We're going to do the same thing as before. Bring all the unknown quantities to the left hand side. And when I say all the unknown quantities, there is only one unknown quantity in this equation, which is the x. But if we did have more than one, we would bring everything on the left-hand side. 
in other words, bring all the x's to one side. How do I bring this negative 3x to this side? By adding 3x to both sides. This is 5. How do we get rid of the 10 from this side? By subtracting 10 from both sides. This is a positive one. So, a positive 10 and a negative 10 cancel each other out. A positive 5x and a positive 3x is going to give us 8x equals now a negative 3x and a positive 3x are going to cancel each other out. And a positive 1 and a negative 10 is going to give us negative 9. Divide both sides by 8. So we can get rid of this 8 and x equals x equals negative 9 over 8. Negative 9 over 8. You're going to have to remember it x equals negative 9 over 8. Now we have to verify it. Uh, verifying this bloody thing is not going to be too much fun. But verify we must. So let's do it. Let's see if we're done. We're going to verify it now. Let's start with left hand side. Left hand side says 5 plus x plus 2. x is negative 9 over 8. Negative 9 over 8 plus the 2. 2 of course, 2 of course can be written as 16 over 8 because we need the common denominator. 16 divided by 8 is 2. This is your 2. This part right here, 16 over 2, that's your, that's your 2. 16 over 8 is your 2. So a negative 9 and a positive 16 is going to give us 7 over 8. 5 times 7 over 8, we get 35 over 8. Let's see what we get on the other side. Remember it was negative 9 8. So here we get 1 minus 3 times negative 9 8. And of course this one, this one can be written as 8 over 8. A negative and a negative is going to give us positive. 3 times 9 is 27 over 8. 8 plus 27, I know 10 plus 27 is 37, so 8 plus 27 must be 35 over 8. What do you know? By golly. By golly. It does work. It does work. That was the right value. The negative 9 8 is the right value. That was C. Let's do one more, shall we? D. Let, that's it. We're done with it. D says x plus 6 times 2x minus 1 equals 0. Now this is more straightforward, this is very simple. Here's what's going on. We have two quantities. One quantity is this and the second quantity is this. So if you are told, if I tell you that a times b equals 0, what do you infer from that? What do you gather from that? What do you surmise from that? We must infer that if the product of two numbers is zero, then either either a is zero, because no, it doesn't matter what b is, if a is zero, then zero times b would be zero, or or b is zero. If b is zero, it doesn't matter what a is, a times zero would be zero. There is a third possibility, which is which is they are both equal to zero. Both A and B are equal to zero. In which case zero times zero is zero. That's what's going on here. This quantity times this quantity equals zero, which means either this quantity is zero or that quantity is zero. That's what we have to contemplate here. That's what we have to analyze here. So here that implies, this implies that either x plus six is zero in which case, in which case x would be negative 6 or 2x minus 1 is 0 in which case 2x would equal positive 1 and x would equal 1 half those are our answers, x is either negative 6 or a pos positive half a negative 6 or a positive half let's verify, shall we? Let's verify it. That's it. We are done. That's, that's the solution. We are done. We have to verify it. I need the room, so I have to erase it. Well, the first part of the verification is very simple. 
if x is negative 6, if x is negative 6 here, negative 6 and a positive 6 is going to become 0. So this is 0, 0 times whatever. zero times whatever equals zero. It doesn't matter what this is. Zero times whatever, zero times any number is zero. So that does work. It does verify it. We, we, we are able to verify it. Let's put in the second value. So now we have x plus six, x plus six, x we are claiming is positive two. So it's six and a half times two times x, which is half minus 1. Now let's see what happens. You mustn't freak out just because I use a different kind of brackets here. Because I need two brackets and a traditional dic in, I need two brackets here to keep this quantity to keep this quantity separate from the six and a half. So I need two quantity because I uh, two brackets because I also need a bracket to keep this half by itself here, this half right here. And tradition dictates that we put this kind of bracket outside, we put this one inside. If you had one more, we could put one like this. These are just traditions. You, you, one does not put this kind of bracket or that kind of bracket in the innermost. It's just a tradition, it's, it's just a convention. There is, no, there is no mathematical reason behind it. Do you understand? And let's not honor the tradition in breach. Let's honor the tradition as we should honor it. So here, you get positive two, we, we get two on the top and two on the bottom, these two are going to cancel out. And what we end up is one, what we end up is, what we end up is one, one minus one. One minus one is zero. This is zero, and zero times whatever is zero. Well, it does work, it does work. That's it, we're done with this one. That was D. E and F. E and F deal with with deal with a concept of factorization. And if you do not know what that is, or if you're shaky on it, if you're not, uh, if, you, if you don't have the firm grasp of the concept, then before you watch the next video where I'm going to solve the D and F by using a method called factorization, before you watch those videos, tomorrow's videos, and the day after tomorrow's video, I would like you to watch day 99 through 103. Day 99 through 103, I spent five days dealing with this concept of factorization. 99, 100, 100, 100, 203. Five days we spend on it. Go back and watch those videos. Make sure you understand all of those problems. So that you can follow me in the work that we are about to do to solve E and F. But that will come tomorrow and day after tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you then. Bye now.